Ding dong, it's me. <laughs> it's me again. The rain has healing energy. <laughs> oh, um, how are you doing? I, uh, I'm fine. But so yesterday I burnt the roof of my mouth really bad. Oh my God, bad. I thought going to say you burnt the roof of your apartment or something. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> no. I don't know why I assumed you burned your building down, but. It's a um... fair assumption. But <laughs> no, I burnt the roof of my mouth like scalded it like I I, as it was the food I was eating was so hot that I couldn't even move so I felt it on the roof of my mouth burning I felt it in the moment and then the food got stuck to the roof of my mouth because it was so burnt on it was really really grotesque and so I'm dealing currently with like a charred roof of my mouth and so my whole mouth feels really dry And I can't even drink water because tonight, later I'm going to, not tonight, later I'm going to a doctor's appointment and I have to fast for it. And I'm not even allowed to drink water. And so I was, my whole mouth is uh, a desert right now. Oh, you have to fast, including water? Mm Mm-hmm. Shit, you get blood drawn? Mm Mm-hmm. Have fun. I know. And uh, I hate needles, so it's not going to be a fun (laughs) fun day. (laughs) Well, I mean, I don't know someone who's like, ah, needles, but I really am like... For sure, on the deep end of the spectrum, where I me like, too, man. I cry every time I see a needle, and no, me it's too. It goes against all human nature to like let someone stab you. Absolutely, so. it does. Thank you for finally uh, acknowledging it. You're welcome. How are you doing? <sighs> well, um, I'm sorry to pile on. Uh oh, I'm not happy with you. With me? Why? Actually, I'm quite mad at you. Okay, why? And I wanted. Don't even give me that attitude. I wanted. <laughs> to talk about this in our last episode but i was like it's my first episode back i want to be you know i I want i want to people to have missed me now i'm back (laughs) to my real self and i'm mad at you and you hurt my feelings why because you and i had a special tv show that we watched and i was on instagram and i'm like looking at your video and all of a sudden i'm like oh my god em is watching our show with allison and rj are you gonna tell people what the show is uh we already talked about the show a lot on the podcast and how it was our show and now you allison rj i guess it's your show now it's called are you the one em and i had a special game we had em had like a whole flow chart it was like a whole thing and then em was like i was like let's watch it on facetime together and em was like yeah and then em visited recently and blaze was like you guys should go watch your show and em was like didn't react and i was like that's weird and you beat me to excited. the punch you were like oh well i no, 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 no. i you i you said something first so i just assumed you didn't want to watch any of it no i oh, okay. said that and you didn't react and i was like that's odd so i was like i guess em doesn't want to watch it so i was like whatever and then a few days later you were watching some totally other season so i was like wow em has been watching this without me and now my feelings are hurt i'm sorry i hurt your feelings but and i told my brother and blazon a fully third party perspective and they both were like yeah that's pretty cold um okay i'm and they sorry said, i'd be pissed too and i was like thank you to be fair, we were watching it in September and hadn't seen any of it since. I thought it, that was like like not happening anymore. But we so. were watching old, old seasons. It's not like, oh, it was live and we were like missing it. I know. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I, it hurt my feeling. And then I DM'd you about it and you like kept changing the subject. And I was like, no, you don't understand. I'm actually sad. I did not. I did not read the room that it was actually a sad experience. I thought it was like, oh, we were watching a show. And then it like several months had passed and we weren't watching don't it. Several so. months me. I had to give birth. October, November. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I was busy. I said, let's FaceTime and watch it. And you were like, totally. And then all of a sudden, next thing I know. Anyway, now I don't have anyone to watch it with. So that's fun. If somebody wants to watch it with me, you can DM me and we'll have an experience together. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm very sorry I hurt your feelings. Let's consider the fact that I burnt a hole through my head yesterday oh with food. Oh, my God. Here we go. Uh, All my, right. Em's having punishment. a hard day. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> it's on me. Right. Okay. I'm the bad guy. All right. Fine. Okay. The end. <laughs> I don't know what to say. But I, I am sorry. I did not know that I hurt your feelings. You are sorry, but you burnt the roof of your mouth. Is that what your final I verdict is? I am sorry that I hurt your feelings, comma, I burnt... 
the roof of my mouth pretty badly, comma. I don't see how those uh, are related, but that's just me. You let me finish my sentence. Comma, they are not related. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> I don't know. Do you want me to sit in the silence of shame? <laughs> no. I, I can. I just feel sad and you don't you don't you don't seem to care. So I'm how can I cry about it? How can I make you feel better? What do you need I to don't feel know. safe? I just um I need to have our show back, but I guess it's too late for that. So I guess Okay. Um, it's not too late. I haven't watched all the seasons. Well, you didn't even tell me you were watching it. I could have watched it with you guys. Nope. That's true. You could have. I, I was guess in the wrong. 100%. I just wasn't good enough to watch it with. I guess not. Wow. That I hurts. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was. I uh, thought we had a good time. I guess we, I was wrong. You were right and I was wrong. I'm just going to keep saying I was wrong because it's true. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, welcome to the show. This is And That's Why We Drink, where we obviously talk about true crime, um, crimes against humanity, a.k.a. Yeah, what me. M has done. Um, I know. Paranormal stuff. Uh, and Christina seeking a new friend. So if you want to apply, feel free. That can be my punishment. I can do all of the, the logistics of finding you the new friend, if you'd like. No, I'll do I'm, all not, the... I'm not. Uh, I, th- I, you, I know you're busy. You have okay. shows to watch. So... Um, <laughs> Don't worry, I'll handle it. Okay, good. Well, I can see when I'm not needed or wanted, so it's fine. Okay, well, you let me know how it goes then. You'll probably find what. Okay, if you're making a friend, let's let's put it out there. If you're looking for a friend, what are the three qualities you're looking for? Here's the thing: I have three friends, and so when I have a show with <laughs> one friend, that's all. I, listen, you took something very special from me, so now I have to go find another friend. So you'll look for watch. loyalty, someone who doesn't um, betray you. That would be hot priority number one. You could betray me, like I don't care, but just you know, with don't you know, a be better at lying about it. Em's not good at lying about it. I would okay, okay. Or B, <laughs> <laughs> TV shows are too far. You can betray me in some way, but like you know, you can steal my heart, heart, but not my <laughs> TV show experience. Okay. Um. That's all I really ask. I feel like I still haven't gotten any qual- character qualities out of you, though, on, like, what you're looking for with this new friend search. Well, you know, it's just... Not a, a, not a bad liar. It's just hurt. Not a bad liar. That's a big one. That's it. That's all it um, takes. It's just hurtful how ready you are to pawn me off on someone else, you know? Okay, someone who's slower to... Uh, Abandon me, yeah. Yeah, abandonment. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Okay. So I'd say loyalty is a fair quality you're looking for. I guess so, yeah. I guess we can sum it up. Hmm. Okay. So I I don't think I can be helpful there. Obviously, I'm the obviously the worst. Tm tm tm. Mm. So, all right. I wish you well in your search. And until you. further notice, I did keep one promise, which is that uh, I told you last episode I would do your numerology chart for I'm always crazy four four four. You sure did. You sure did. And it didn't go as expected. Oh. Um. So I had to force the narrative, if you what? will. What? What happened? So for I'm Always Crazy 444, the life path I got for you was a 15, which 1 plus 5 equals 6. So it mm. simplifies to 6. Heart's Desire 1. And then I didn't look at the other ones just because life path and heart's desire were like the two most right. important. So I was like, I'm just going to stick with those. But then I saw one. You know how like in astrology, there's like... Everyone knows their sun sign, but they don't always know, like, all the other extra sure. things. Same thing in numerology where there's other numbers. I just wasn't aware of what they were called. But there's one called rational thought. And I oh, was like, I, was ha- zero. <laughs> I, ha- I was like, I have to know what the number is for I'm always crazy. Okay. And to clarify, everybody, I'm always with a Z. Crazy444 was my middle school AIM username. So if if you needed some context, it was pretty obvious, I guess. But here it is if you needed it. <laughs> Honestly, nothing really has enough context uh, on our show. I feel like someone's always asking us. like Somebody's the, always confused for good reason. To this day, people are like, who's Lemon? So <laughs> maybe I'm always crazy. 444 four, four did need the, uh, the extra <laughs> definition. So you're a life path six, a heart's desire one. And then obviously when I saw rational thought, I was like, let's see where that takes us. And it was seven. negative eight. <laughs> so um, for your life path number, 
it, this was a quote that I got from Creative Numerology. It said, people are attracted by your exciting aura. I'm always crazy, 444. There you are, walking through life on a high wire, perfectly balanced and at ease. Wow. So that was kind of like an in-the-middle statement I was fine with. But for the most part, I got overwhelming uh, descriptions about harmony and balance. And, Incorrect. And responsibility and caretaking. And I was like, oh, this is really, really boring. Yeah. Um, care to also all highly incorrect because, I mean, all it was was like Comic Sans Gavin DeGraw lyrics. And like, cha- like chaos ensues, right? Chaos. So I decided I was like, I can't work with this. So I, this is where I forced the narrative because I was like, I don't want to come back and say I'm always crazy. 444 four, four. was secretly the most harmonious maybe character. that is the, maybe that's the key maybe i need to go back to those days and then i'll really find balance in life you know uh, sure um, what if i changed my username on instagram honestly that. that would be hilarious i'm gonna work on it okay if you did that i'll venmo you five dollars <laughs> oh whoa okay i like to venmo people things uh during dares because i feel like they're more inclined to do it also i'm also likes to venmo request money from people i know that <laughs> from experience i do but it's never a lot of money it's no, like it's not it's like a dollar or yeah. five sometimes if it's like like it was five dollars during pride season and i was like you have to do this and there else. was there were usually threats associated <laughs> <laughs> And then for the rest of the time, it's like like my one friend Brandy. I we Venmo each other back and forth a penny all the time. We've been doing it for like three years. Oh my god! And it's always just like the meanest insult that goes with the penny. It started with like because I'm older than you, and now it's like I don't even know. I wouldn't now even it's know like what to tell because you. you're older than me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, okay. So I thought the life path response of like harmony blah, blah blah was super boring so this is where i really went digging and i was desperate for like a chaotic response and i found one for <gasps> a life path six and it's from the secret of the tarot.com uh-huh and this is the uh, direct quote the devil is associated primarily with <laughs> sensuality and ego and both of these characteristics can be detected in number 15 by examining its individual digits. The number one has many positive leadership qualities, but it also faces the challenge of keeping ego in check. The number five is the number of sensual or materialistic pleasures. And when a person is in an unbalanced psychological state, I'm always crazy, 444. <laughs> These influences may develop into the sense of pride, covetous, and even addiction that are very much associated with the biblical interpretation of the devil. And I was like, that's, oh. that's the shit I needed. That's finally nail on the head. So thank you, uh, The Secret of the Tarot, for I'm Always Crazy, 444's uh, to a T description. Someone gets it. And then for your heart's desire slash soul's urge, you got a number one, which... Basically, everywhere I saw you were charismatic, but you're highly competitive, overly confident, remarkable willpower, and doesn't wish to follow anyone. And I was like, that tracks. That tracks. It sort of does. But also, at the time, I really, all I wanted was somebody to think I was cool, and um, it didn't work. So, hmm. Honestly, it sounds like you're, by name alone, you manifested uh, a whole a whole, I don't know, <laughs> scenario for yourself. I guess if you look at my old MySpace i don't know i don't know i mean willpower yeah i I can i can get behind that one for sure and then of course my favorite is rational thought for oh well i'm always crazy 444 here's a quote you are an investigator by nature sounds sounds a little crazy Uh, very Uh, you tend to doubt in most of information until you experience it yourself that also sounds like i'm always crazy exactly correct yes I think of I'm always crazy 444 as like desperately impulsive. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> if you are sure about something, you act spontaneously. And oh, if gosh. you are not right, you aren't afraid to lose anyway. Yeah, that sounds right. And I literally would pretend to be people's crushes just to get information out of them and stuff like that. So, well, there you have it. That is uh, I'm always crazy 444 is very bare bones numerology. So. I love that, M. And I feel like I'm seen. I. Yeah. I feel like it's finally, at least I'm always crazy 444 got the spotlight. Because if all you wanted by making that was to look really cool, I don't know how cool it is that we just spent 10 minutes talking about it on your podcast. But hey, we talked about it on your podcast. That's pretty cool. You know what? That's pretty cool. I have a free radio show. And as uh, our moms say, 
as our moms say. And um, I was featured on it. So good for me. <laughs> yes, you were featured on your own show. I've gotten far in life. <laughs> Just wait till next week when you're featured again. <laughs> uh, next next week, maybe we'll do Rice Pudding 9. Oh, okay. No. Ooh, Rice that's Pudding 9. Dangerous. That's a chaotic one right there. That's a chaotic one. And also, that's when I really tried to come into my own and Thing. I'm always crazy was me trying to like be somebody you know rice pudding nine was like this is my live journal and you're gonna learn about the ants I received in the mail what um, was the rice pudding experience why rice pudding of all other foods I just really like rice pudding to this day or did love you it. like oh. absolutely love it okay well I can't have, sit here and pretend have like you I'm surprised. had it yes I have had it you, you know like what it? I thought you know what I thought about it Blech! that's what I thought you don't like it, it just tastes like pudding no but better okay well i feel like if you are the spokesman for rice pudding nine you are absolutely going to say anything positive about rice pudding until everyone backs away so you're right rice okay. pudding nine. delicious well, d- okay you are putting you are putting unfair things on me here all i said was that i love it and you said it was disgusting what is the grossest thing i eat in your opinion <sighs> oh gosh Hmm. You can get look. This is you can. I'm giving you a moment to throw whatever insult you'd like at me. I don't know. I don't want to insult you. That's the thing. Hmm. I don't have a problem with what you eat. That's you have crazy. a problem with what I eat. I sure do. I um, sure do. Oh no! Rice pudding nine isn't available on Instagram. Crap. <gasps> Did you put I'm always crazy four 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 though? I'm gonna do that now. If that's taken, something terrible has happened. <laughs> it's lemon actually it's his it's his finsta all right everybody please go follow i'm always crazy 444 on Instagram. no way i'm so excited okay I, i'm gonna venmo you but you have to keep it for a whole week okay i will okay Hang no on. but i i changed my my other account to it it's a what other it's account a, it's a secret account that i had Christine. That I changed to I'm always crazy for four. So you have a whole it. Instagram account I don't know about? Uh-huh. Okay. I delete all the posts oh. off it. Yeah, let's talk about who lies to who, Christine. You've got a whole account? Okay, hang on. Okay. I'm still gonna Venmo you. It has I'll sixteen pay- followers. Okay, then I'll Venmo you sixteen dollars. Now I'm gonna do seven to one for every day you keep it on there. <laughs> <laughs> crazy <laughs> pay. Okay. I'll see you in seven days. That's Except I won't because I don't know what the fuck this profile is. It is. It's I'm always crazy 444. Okay. I'm going to look it up later. Okay. Here's my story for the day, Christine. And it's a short one, but I think it's it's still it's still good. Okay. This is uh, the story of Kerner's Folly. What you the hell this? is that? So... First of all, I want to give a shout out to History Goes Bump for oh. the history of this because I couldn't really find any solid history of the house except on like its own website and then through History Goes Bump. So thank you for that. It's a podcast, right? It's a podcast. Cool. As far as I as far as I know, I, yeah. I don't know if there are anything else. I didn't know if they had a blog or something. If that's where you got it, like a blog, or if it was from the, their podcast. They also ha- they also have a blog, I think. Oh, cool. Um, so. Kerner's Folly is, I think at one point it was kind of, by accident, it was like a Winchester Mystery House situation. Oh. So it, it has been deemed the strangest house in America. Oh, above the Winchester? Okay. I'll argue and say the Winchester Mystery House is, far surpasses. It's hard with this to t- beat. It's definitely more strange to me, but this is strange in a different way. Okay. So it was built by Jewel Gilmer Kerner. Jewel, Joel Kerner, Jewel, oh my God, Jewel Kerner. <laughs> um, oh my God. Technically, he built it from 1877 to 1880, and that was like when the actual construction of the home was built. But like the Winchester Mystery House, it was always under constant renovation with new for new rooms or mm. new designs. So um, this was in Kernersville, North Carolina. It was owned by uh, Joseph Kerner. Uh, oh, Kernersville itself was owned by Joseph Kerner, uh, who I think is Jewel Kerner's grandfather. So I think oh. his grandfather like owned the whole town at one point. Wow. 
Uh, Jewel was born in 1851. He went to school for interior design. And when he came home from school, he started a sign painting business. Okay. How, how, do you happen to be on the side of TikTok where you watch people paint signs? I don't think so. It is fascinating. It cool. is. If you're into like the like oddly satisfying stuff. Yes. Wow. Is it like vinyl? Out. Like they peel it? No, it's like old school paintbrush and it's like the really pretty oh, how handwriting. Cool. Like it's like how people like will still paint like on like glass windows, like ads and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like how they do it so perfectly and don't mess up at all beyond me. Love that. So he used to do – he started a sign painting business. Um, I don't know if this was a normal thing to do back then, but apparently with his sign painting business, he had a – what history goes bump calls a brush name or like a pen name <gasps> a brush name and so he didn't actually go by jewel kerner he went by i don't know do you what's you his name joseph kerner or wait are we talking his, about jewel? his we're talking about jewel who built oh, the house the grand- his, his grandfather owned the, the town sorry okay got it got it got it got it so jewel kerner opened the sign painting business and he had a brush name I don't even know. Do you want to guess? It's such a random thing to ask you to guess on. I'll guess. Um, I'll tell you. It's in. It's uh, it, the first and last name have the same letter. Hmm. Like they you start with the same. Yes, you don't have to guess if you don't want to. It's such a random thing to put you on the spot for. Um. It's okay. M- Mickey Mouse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was Reuben Rink. So I was I don't, close. You were. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I mean, if Mickey Mouse's name was Reuben Rink, you were spot on. <laughs> <laughs> so he started the Reuben Rink Decorating and House Furnishing Company. I feel nice. like when your job is to paint the names of businesses, you would have known to probably have a shorter business name than that. Maybe but, he just wanted to brag and make the longest sign, you know. Yeah, he was like, look at all I can do. Look at all these letters. Can you uh, – Ruben Rink Decorating and House Furnishing Company. How many fonts can you paint wow. out of that? Wow. Can you every, paint in every Curl's letter. MT because that would be something. <laughs> also, Imagine if Curl's MT, the first, like, documented time we see Curl's MT was because someone sign painted that way. Some old-timey sign. I'd be impressed. <laughs> I will say um, it sounds like R was his best letter because with that Ruben Rink, he probably was, like, showing off his fancy R. You, you know? know, it was like a woo, A big like, swirly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It had to be. Had to be. So uh, uh, further on in life. So his paint, sign painting business is super successful. And he even ends up uh, a few years down the road doing personal ceiling frescoes for people. Oh. Like, this guy knows how to paint. Wait, I have one of those. You do. That's why your kid keeps laughing. Because it's a <laughs> joke. No. It's a weird thing. <laughs> I didn't know a ceiling fresco was a thing. And then I bought my house and they were like, we got a ceiling fresco made. And I was like, that's. You were like, well, I'm not going to paint over it out of guilt, but we this is not what I needed. We thought about painting over it. We just couldn't do it. Anyway. I feel like if I walked into a house that was now my home and there was something really wildly ornate and elaborate on a wall, on one wall, and it's yeah. the wall that I don't even look at because it's above my head, I'd be like, whatever. Just That's exactly it. what we thought. We were like, we'll paint everything else and just like let that sit. Except your weird flower wall. Yeah, that part too. But that was the one where we were like, felt guilty because there's like these creepy cherubs on it. <laughs> and I'm like, they're going to haunt the shit out of me if I paint over their little f- butts and faces. Ugh, gross. Imagine if you just put wallpaper on it and then let the next family take the wallpaper ha! down. And that like, would be funny. And then they and then they very – they just roll it back up. <laughs> like, I feel okay. – yeah, like, oh, stick it – glue, stick it back on. <laughs> I feel like that's a TikTok, like, look what I found under our wallpaper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then – well – Anyway, let me know if you decide to do that. I will fund the wallpaper because I, I think that'd be very I funny. Actually, we, I was thinking about doing like a TikTok of like the weird shit in my house because there's like a, some weird shit in the basement. There's that weird ceiling. There's the mural of the angels. I don't know. I'll think You've about it. You've got a creepy house. It's bizarre. I really don't know worth. how you found such a wild house. It also at one point was like different apartments. Yeah. And so it looks like five little homes in some yeah, spaces. Like different sections. It's such a weird house. You really christined it. It was the most Christine thing you could have done for a house. <laughs> if you just showed me like a plain old house and you were like, this is it, I'd be like, no, it's not. Lies. <laughs> it's like, Show unless, me the fresco. <laughs> unless I feel haunted by multiple cherubs on your walls, I don't want it. Um, so 
yes, he went by Ruben Rink, and he also, a good chunk of his life, I don't know if this was like his main client or just his most famous client, or I don't know. I feel like I kept seeing this in any history I looked up for the house. They mentioned that he was the advertisement and sign painter for Bull Durham Tobacco. Oh, so okay. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I'm not from the area, so I also don't know if Bill Durham Tobacco is like a big thing today and maybe that's why they keep mentioning it but i saw it all over the place and i was like now i'm feeling like a little mob mentality that i should also mention it so i see so while having long-term clients he also kept uh himself unique to other design companies because he made his house into his own portfolio which is why it's considered the strangest house in america because Ah. He had all of these rooms. He had like over 20 rooms and every single thing, the fireplaces, the windows, the doorways. It was known for no one thing to be similar to the rest in the house. And so that way he could bring clients into his home. And if he was going to build their house for them, they could see all the elements in his house. And it was basically a walking tour of what do you want? Wow. So um I know he had like 15 fireplaces or something. Oh my and God. None of them were ever used because they were all supposed to be like 15 different types of display fireplaces for his clients. Can you imagine <laughs> it being freezing and your wife is like, please, let's just light one. And they're, he's like, no, not for the he's clients. Like, that one has a uh, gold leaf painted in it. We can't yeah. light it on fire. <laughs> but don't tell my clients when they come in here. They, they need to buy that. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so uh, until he died, Jewel was constantly redoing his house to show clients his skills and what they could expect from working with him. So like I said, every window and door frame was different. So clients could walk through and select what they wanted. And Uh, Again, he built the house in 1877, but he was constantly rebuilding and redesigning until his death in 1924. So that's what? 23 plus 24 is 47 years. I'll trust you on that. The place has over 20 rooms of all sizes. Apparently there was like big like ballroom spaces, but then there was also like tiny little crannies. They had ceilings of all different heights. The, the house actually looked like it was three stories from outside, but when you walked in, it was seven levels. Whoa. Um, there were uh, 130 stairs or 130 steps and eight different sizes of brick all over the house. Jeez. Okay. So it got its name, Kerner's Folly, because someone walked by and saw how chaotic it looked and said, surely this will be Jewel Kerner's Folly. Oh, that's not very nice. (laughs) Well, he liked the sound anyway, so he ran with it. Oh, he he embraced it. Okay. Yeah, he was like, all right, Kerner's Folly. And so... I I mean, it's a cool name. It's definitely a cool name, especially then when you pair it with The Strangest House in America. It's like that tracks. Absolutely. So Jewel later married uh, Alice. I think her first name was Polly. Uh, But she went by Alice. Her first name was Polly, but I think she went by Alice. And... They ended up having two kids named Gilmer and I think it's Dore, Dora. It's D O R E, Dor- So it's not. It's Dora no with an E. Dora. Dora. I don't know. Dor. Okay. Oh so my God, door. It was one of his portfolio pieces. He should have like, had window and door. That should have been his door. <laughs> <laughs> so the family. Uh, I guess they were big in theater, and so they also used their house to co-found multiple theater organizations, and those places actually held performances in his house. So he built a theater upstairs. Do you remember the Whaley Whaley House, House? how there was like a theater up inside the house? It was kind of like that. Interesting. That's the first thing I thought of, yeah. Yeah, I remember. That was the first time I'd ever seen like a small theater in an actual home and i was like weird there was like a stage yeah it was yeah strange. and it was like enough for like at least 50 of the town's people to come and squish into yeah, the room and it and wasn't like watch. a huge house or anything no it was weird it was a weird thing and i guess they also did it so they co-founded as a family the kernersville orchestra the juvenile lyceum which was a drama club for kids which sounds Fun. a lot darker than it was yeah it does and cupid's park theater which were all in the house. Okay. Um, and they all performed there. So after Jewel and Alice died, their daughter, Dora? Maybe it's Dory. Dory? Oh. I don't know. I'm so stupid. How is that not an option? That I, I, I mean, of? I don't know. I could be very wrong. I have no clue. Their daughter, Dory, used the home as a vacation home with uh, her family. And then she eventually rented it out to be an antique store and a funeral parlor, which oh. is 
interesting in hindsight now that we know it's haunted. Yeah. And over time, it was just kind of abandoned. But eventually, I think it was 26 families in town got together and created the Kerner's uh, Folly Foundation. Kerner's Folly Foundation. And they bought the house and are now restoring the building back to what it looked like from 1890 to 1950, which LOL, like if it was constantly being rebuilt and redesigned, 1890 to 1915 is like what 25 years range. of <laughs> yeah. half of, half of the house's lifetime of being rebuilt you're going to give it that many aesthetics wait 1950 or 1915 1915 sorry oh 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 okay sorry 1890 I was like... to 1915 got you okay but yeah if they were built if he was constantly redoing that house for 47 years and they're bringing the building back to 25 of those 47 what years to be yeah it's like what in the world is it gonna look like <laughs> it would be cool if they made every room like they quartered it and you could see like what one quarter Ooh. you know what i mean like through the years you just peel back the wallpaper there's a cherub on this wall <laughs> then you leave the wallpaper on this it's one. like looking through records like you keep doing it with yeah. wallpaper and you just keep seeing what it looked like a year That's before that and a year cool. before that. i actually like that <laughs> i do too also it'd be really fun if you're like someone who does like minis or like make sculptures mm. like or does like um like i know doll houses are like a really big thing for some people to mm-hmm. like like recreate actual buildings uh if you wanted to make kerner's folly and like somehow make it where like the walls like flap down and it's more and more versions of the same house that'd be kind of badass Ooh, you can swap out oh that'd be really cool <gasps> if you were looking for like a very complicated dollhouse to make there you go that like maybe we're the only clients but we'll i'd be it. very <laughs> happy about it hey <laughs> so um so that's the history of the house although i do want to make a note that uh <sighs> it's awkward because i don't know how accurate this is and i don't know if it's like trying to sound better than it is but i will say jules family when he was growing up they had enslaved people on the property Mm -hmm. and uh the one that took care of him and his brother they called aunt dealy because i guess they couldn't pronounce when they were young deary which is what she called them okay so it became like they called her they tried to call her aunt deary right it became aunt dealy I don't know how true this is, but a, it's alleged that they had a very good relationship with each other and they stayed friends after he grew up and she even moved into Kerner's Folly with him. But then again, I don't know if that means like, did he keep her as a... Right. You know? Like help, right. It's like, yeah, like was was she just getting to like max and relax or... And like, I don't this know. this their claim or was this her claim, right? Exactly. Yeah, it gets a little messy. So I don't know what the full truth is, but from what I've been able to find, it sounds like he really did think of her as his mom because his mom died when he was younger. And so he, he, from what I'm seeing, it seems like he as a child really, really loved her. Right. And he even wanted her buried next to them, which again, I don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing that like maybe now she's not being buried next to her own family. Yeah, like where's her family? (laughs) You know? (laughs) Um. But I did want to say that, so I guess he was supposed to get buried at a certain church with the rest of his family, but, and he wanted her buried with the family, but the church, because of segregation, they said, no, she can't be buried with us. Oh, yikes. Okay. And so he ended up buying the plot next door and made it his own personal family cemetery so she could also be buried with them. And the headstone that he wrote for her was very, it's... The headstone itself seemed very sweet, but I don't know if there were any underlying. Sure. Yeah. So anyway, I just, I didn't want to not address the fact that there were enslaved people on this property. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I know it sounds like a weird insert into this story, but I didn't want to not mention it. No, no. Like, I mean, it's part it. of the history and context, I guess. So. As um, fucked up as it is. And also, I don't know what the full solid truth of the history is, but. All I could see was one side of this, and it was right. that they at least seemed to be really close until they both died. So right. I don't know. So in 2009, this is where the, the ghosts show up now. So that was the whole history of the house. Love it. But in 2009, the house was officially deemed haunted after an investigation was done by the Carolina chapter of SPARS. And SPARS stands for Southern Paranormal and Anomaly Research Society. I was just thinking about how these ghosts, because I started watching A Haunting again on uh, Discovery Plus, and I started thinking about like how all these ghost hunting groups have just the most fun names. 
Um, and I think it's because they get to have the S and the P. Yeah. Like, d- there's just a lot of, like, fun little acronyms. And the one that I always think of is when we did that tour in Kentucky and they were like, oh, the group is called Pink, the Paranormal Investigators of Northern Kentucky. And I was like, yeah, I, it's just, like, so random. <laughs> there was my my mom for a while. She went through this phase where, like, if you're even remotely in the South, they were selling, like, dish towels and stuff with the acronym SLUTS, and it was Southern Ladies Under Tremendous Stress or something. <laughs> oh, my God. It was, like... I could not she, have guessed what the fuck that stood for. She went through a phase where she, like, really loved the SLUTS acronym, and I was like... <laughs> mm. But, yeah, I really... It's, like, uh, in the paranormal world, I feel like you've already got spirits, you've got paranormal... Orbs could be an O. Anomaly orbs. I hadn't seen before as an A. We're the Orb Society. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of all the like the letters you know you could insert in there if you needed like G an extra for letter. ghost. G for ghost. Yeah. Hmm. Fun stuff. I'm trying to think of like a silly acronym. I can't do it on the fly. But yeah, so they were spars, and they are actually like apparently a subgroup of Taps, which are the people who mm. had the show Ghost Hunters. Ghost Hunters, right? Um, TAP stands for the Atlantic Paranormal Society. And I guess SPARS is like somehow involved in them. I don't know if they're the same or if one is like in charge of the other, but there you have it. So, uh, yeah, in 2009, they did a, an investigation and the group got several EVPs and light anomalies. And they were very insistent in every interview that these light anomalies were not bugs or dust and they like followed the trail and the pattern. I still don't totally understand enough about yeah, orbs. It's hard. I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm not skeptical about a lot of things, but I am skeptical about orbs. That's what Jim Harold always says. He's like, yeah, orbs are one thing I tend to be more skeptical about. And I'm like, me too. It's just hard because so many weird things happen on cameras as it is that it's hard to like say like, there's no way it was. A it's also or a- it's the same thing with like saying like, oh, and then people saw shadows and it's like, OK, but everything's got a shadow. It's like right. if you saw a shadow of a full body with a cowboy hat and he was walking towards you that's right. one thing but if you're just seeing shadows move around out of like, the corner of your eye or whatever and then with yeah. like um with like z- z- a certain a certain z- someone um <laughs> when it's like oh i feel like a negative energy i'm like well okay that's also hard to like validate i don't know like yeah i and i've had i feel like anyone who's had like a sleep paralysis demon or something feels like They've had that yes. feeling where it's like, this is not an, th- I, I'm not fucking around. This is a crazy feeling. Yeah. But like, poor bagel bites, like, it doesn't translate well to television. No. Like, and that's the thing. Like, I've had that too. And it's like, oh shit, now I get what he's talking about. But like, yeah. like you said, it just doesn't, I don't expect like, anyone to believe me because I'm like, well. For entertainment value, it doesn't do it the purpose. I'm it like, I'm also on antidepressants. Like, if I see some, feel something <laughs> negative, like, it's not a fucking shock to anybody. But anyway. Exactly. Um, all right. So they, anyway, they claimed that they saw a lot of light anomalies that could not be explained. They were very adamant about that. Um, and Kerner's Folly has a, I don't know if they still do, but at one point had a literal paranormal advisor Ooh. as part of their building. And, cool. uh, her name was Deanna Kelly Sayed, Sayed, Sayed. And, so she got to go on the investigation with them, and she said her favorite piece of evidence was this EVP of a girl very clearly saying peekaboo. Ooh. Which, hate that, because that means she's playing a game of hiding with you. Yes. <laughs> and she's like, I see you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't see you even you, when you're trying to show bad, yourself. Bad. They also asked, can you tell us your name, and got an EVP, Anne which I don't know who Anne would be. But keep in mind, this was also a funeral parlor for a while. True. So, and keep in mind, there were enslaved people on this property. Right. So, and, a the- and a bunch of theaters. So like a bunch of people were coming in and out of here. So the Winston-Salem Paranormal Society, and a whole other group. Winston-Salem Paranormal. Wisps. Wisps. Wis- wisps. But yeah, they could have like thrown in. You better hope you don't have a lisp, though, because that's a rough one. Wisps. (laughs) I know. Winston Salem Paranormal Society. Wow. Oof. Yikes. My mom, when she used to have a lisp, she couldn't say her S's. And she still does that thing. I guess it's pretty popular with people who have stutters or lisps. They, like, in their mind, play every word out before they say it to make sure they're not going to get caught. Oh. 
And so a lot of times she'll still not use words with an S. She still thinks. Interesting. Like play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, every single one of her last names she's had all would be a real F you to her lisp. Like they, if you were to write, if she were to say all of her last names in a row that she's had with her lisp, it's just like, (laughs) wow, you just never stood a chance. Poor girl. So. uh, She should have, before she got married, been like, let me play this out in my head. I know. (laughs) Is that the work? Sorry. I think it saved uh, a lot of trouble. <laughs> after like three names, I think she was like, "What's a what's a fourth? You Wait, know? Hang on, my my mom's <laughs> names are all S too. That's weird. She first start event. Only one of them hasn't been an S. Wow. For my mom. Well, same with well, the K one. Is that your mom never took that one? Kaiser. Oh, we're Wait. just saying it. Yeah. Well, that's yes. her. That's her maiden name. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You're a sister. That's her middle name. Yep. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. And then my mom changed. Um, her own middle name, which was Christine, deleted that right out of her fucking name. She was like, that name fucking sucks. And changed it to Kaiser. I was like, cool, cool. Glad we're on. Glad this is a thing now. What? So, OK, good for her, I guess. What is your dad's middle name? Uh, you want to know? Franz I, Josef. OK, I don't want to know anymore. Never mind. Wait, I told you. So wait. So would that be Frank Joseph or Francis Joseph? Yeah, That's how it sounded like that. Okay, yeah. so was it? Is it a double name in, it's a in German too? Yeah, yeah. Okay, who who's France and who's Joseph? I have no fucking clue. I probably should know. Really? I feel like if you're gonna get a double middle name, it better be worth it. It better like, mean something. Yeah. I don't know. I honestly, that's a prob- a really good question. Where's Maria from? Uh, that's my grandmother's name. Oh, fun. His mom. Yeah, he's threatened to write a memoir or like a book about himself. And I'm like, oh. Crap. I like how it's a threat. <laughs> it's a full threat. To me, it's a threat. I don't know about anyone else, but to me, it's a personal threat. Um, so maybe I'll find out in that book. Wow. <laughs> I, hmm. My, my mom's middle name is Diane, which ooh. is so wild because I don't think of her. When I think of Diane's, I don't think of my mom. And I'm like, ooh, you've got a weird connection Diane. there. Diane. I also remember being a little shamed when I was a child because I didn't, like, I thought I was really helping my mom out, like, make a friend. But I remember being on a plane with her one time and we sat next to a woman and her name was Diane. And I remember being like, mom, mom, tell her that's your middle name. Tell her that's your middle name. And my mom was like, no, no, no. And, like, clearly my mom just didn't want to talk to a stranger on the plane. (laughs) But I took it personally and I was like, this I, I'm trying to get you a friend, homie. Like, like, what is your problem? And to this and, day, you're sitting here going, what are the three? Uh, Christine, I'll help you find a new friend. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just desperate to help people find friends, I guess. But with my, <laughs> I remember in that moment, like, never liking the name Diane again because Aww. I just felt so em- felt so embarrassed. Like, I was trying so hard yeah, to help. that's so sad. I know. Well, I've had worse trauma. Don't worry. Um, are you, oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Can you imagine if that was the worst thing I had to, like, go to a therapist about? We wouldn't be f- – I don't think we'd no. be fr- – because we would just not get – you know, not be on the same page, I think. We'd be like, wow, yeah. that must be tough for you to deal with every day. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> Allison and I are so different where I – not to say, like – I'm not trying to, like, compare trauma and say I've had the worst things happen to me, but – in between me and Allison, I definitely have had more shit in my life, yeah. like a significant amount. And Allison is just like this sweet, happy, little, pure, innocent person. And like, I always, I always say that like, she's got happily married parents and like, oh, she's same just, with Blaze. We have the weirdest partners. We like pick the weirdest yeah. partners for ourselves. And, and so now when I talk about anything that happened in my childhood, she's like, are you okay? <laughs> like, no. What? How many times do I like, tell you? <laughs> like you chose to date me knowing that there was a lot was of baggage. Say, I don't know what your problem is. I gave Blaze many years before he signed any paperwork to marry me. I was like, you've met all these people. This is your fucking problem now. I've, well, I've I've complained about like certain people in my family and Allison's like, I don't get it. And I'm like, I appreciate that you're trying to get it, but I don't think anyone who's just had like <laughs> such a wonderful, like her life is, sounds so nice. Like, and I've asked her like, what's like the, the worst thing you've done, Allison? What's like the the craziest I'm always crazy for her for thing you've done. <laughs> and she tells this story about one time she like, I, like, I don't even remember. I can't even remember what it was. Cause it was, it was something about a street sign. She like, like the name had been spelled wrong and she tried to fix it or something. That was like the <laughs> craziest thing she's ever done. And I was like, Oh no, now I'm scared to tell you about all the abandoned houses I broke into. <laughs> she can listen to this podcast and knows pretty well. 
Oh, but anyway, yeah, Blaze is the same way where I'm like, Blaze must think I'm a dumpster fire. Like, just, it's, I'm, I'm sure you I'm sure you live with that every day. I'm the barrier. He knows me and he's like, nothing surprises me anymore about other Christine's friends and family. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. I warned uh, you. Well, anyway, wild tangent there. Sorry, folks. But the Winston-Salem Paranormal <laughs> Society has... Wisps. <laughs> <laughs> They've come in to investigate, um, and they the house also does guided tours. I think they have other paranormal groups in there. And basically, uh, what all of the visitors and staff have seen over time are as follows. There are apparitions in the theater. Um, they, oh, this the, wins, the Wisps, they had a really good flashlight session one time that was super responsive, um, both in the theater and also in the master bedroom. Uh, which apparently the bedroom is the most active, mm. but they've had a flashlight session there where they were saying like, turn off the flashlight if there's more than one spirit here and the flashlight turned off. Then turn it back on if you're a woman and it would turn back on. Nice. And can you tap it off again really slowly and then it would very slowly turn off. Ooh. In the kids' room, there's a lot of giggling. Mm -mm. I guess they've someone has asked, can you turn the light out? And then EVP uh, came about of a voice saying turn. Okay. okay. Uh, one voice, I thought this was super interesting, is one of the voices, uh, one of the EVPs came out while people were setting up for the night, and I guess they were talking about EVPs. And they got an EVP of a voice saying, what's an EVP? <laughs> Which I actually, love that. That was actually me in the background being like, shit, I forget. <laughs> what's an EVP, M? Can you explain it to me again? It might have been like the intern on his first night being like, I know I'm supposed to know that. Like whispering it, <laughs> trying to Google it, like, what's an EVP? <laughs> the pa in the background's like shit why did they hire me for this job there's also an evp of the word haunted which like feels super condescending it's like yeah it's like thanks i gathered that by hearing anything at all on this yeah, yeah thank you for confirming it. <laughs> it's like i hope it said it condescendingly too like haunted you this get is it haunted. Now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh there's a spirit of a little girl seen all over the house people hear her giggling people have heard girl Maybe. I think it, it's probably Peekaboo Girl. Um, people have heard wailing. People have seen shadows. They have gotten pinched. People have gotten tapped all over their body or on their Ugh. clothes. Um, there's an apparition of a woman in Victorian clothing standing on the stage who has vanished in front of people. Uh, there are EVPs that will get caught as meters in the room are going off at the same time. So double mm -hmm. confirmation. Mm -hmm. um, EMFs have gone off. If you say, like, can you go off 10 times in a row, it'll go off exactly 10 times in a row. Oh, wow. The house cleaner once heard footsteps on the staircase that were so real she thought someone might have been in the house with her. I don't um, like that. Batteries have drained out of electronics and a lot out of their uh, equipment. Right. One of the theaters that's still used for practice, actors say that they, when they leave for the night, they'll turn around and look back into the windows and see that all the lights are back on. So Never they have to look go. back in the windows. <laughs> it's like, if you want to waste the electricity, that's not on me. True. True point. And that sucks because then you get blamed for it probably by the people p paying the electric bill. For the people who have lights that go on all the time and you think it's ghosts, like, I wonder what it'd be like if you just taped the light switches down at night and just... Would the tape be ripped off the next day? Great you know, question. Anyway. Great question. There was a smoking room in the house, and I guess it still smells like cigars sometimes. In other areas of the house, sometimes you smell cigars, but you also smell cigarettes. Um, when the house was an, an antique store, the staff would come in in the morning, and the furniture had moved itself all around. And what's super yeah. interesting about that is different sources said 80%, some said 90%. Of the furniture in that antique store were was the Kerner's furniture. Oh, they're like, what are you? What's my couch doing in the window? <laughs> I know. God. Uh, ghosts. So there's a book called Ghosts of the Triad and Tales from the Haunted Heart of the Piedmont. In this book, the two authors they were interviewing people for the book, including Diana, the paranormal oh, yeah. advisor for the house. So when they were at the house and interviewing Diana, they said, how many spirits are thought to be here? And uh, both of them heard a random voice in the house say five. Ooh. Even though no one else was in the house. Creepy. So Jules' granddaughter, also named Polly, uh, I, I guess. I you were going to say also named Jules. And I was like, that's so cute. That'd be precious. Yeah. No, Jules' granddaughter, um, Polly, I guess she's been 
asked to comment on the house being haunted and she's or what her grandfather would think of this and she said he would be thrilled to death to know it was haunted he always liked things that were out of the ordinary okay and He's that's like, just kerner's folly make it a little a little cre- i was trying to think of how to say folly or folly or no that doesn't work um just make it even more unique i guess if it's trying to be the strangest house what is it the weirdest house in america the strangest house in america strangest Yep. Yeah, I guess he would He would embrace it. That's pretty wild. I mean, um, if you wanted your house to be weird and now it's also right? haunted, like, you kind that's of what, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, why not at that point? Yeah. Um, Question. Where is that again? North oh, Carolina? North Carolina. Kernersville, okay. North Carolina. Sweet. And it's um, spelled like corner with a K. But it was... Oh. Pern- so... It was that's so I I never mentioned that earlier, but it's Kernersville with an E. It cur like spelled exactly how it sounds. Kernersville, oh. and it was owned by Joseph Kerner. And I guess over time, maybe his last name changed or something. Well, and I can probably it, explain it, which is that O umlaut is like the E sound in German, so mm. it probably just got changed from Kerner to Kerner. Mm-hmm. Yep, that tracks. Interesting. Yes, especially because that's a very German name. Yeah. Josef, Franz Josef. Maybe that's who I'm named. Maybe that's who my dad's named after. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That Probably would be not. a really silly co- coincidence, I think. <laughs> really <laughs> weird for my grandparents. To- I mean, knowing your father, though, if he ever heard that we were talking about Kerner's Fell, he'd be like, oh, yeah, I lived there as a child. And I'd be like, <laughs> girl, what? Like, what? My mom <laughs> would be like, I drove a semi truck there and then modeled for this <laughs> sign company and like, whatever. I just can't keep up with these people. Okay, well, Em, I have um, something sad to tell you. Wow. That's every week. Yay. Is it? Is it? Hmm. Well, you surprise me. I'll just tell you. Um, it's the story of Joyce Chang. Okay. And uh, she was a 28-year-old woman uh, who was last seen Saturday, January 9th of 1999. Mm-hmm. She lived with her younger brother, Roger, in a basement apartment in the DuPont Circle area of Washington, D.C. Mm. Good times. Mm -hmm. She had originally moved to D.C. as part of her college internship, and she worked for Representative Howard Berman of California. So she did the classic D.C. internship, political internship route. She had graduated from Smith College and Georgetown Law School. Mm. And uh, I know she's smarty pants. Earned her place as a lawyer at the INS, the Immigration and Naturalization Service. Wow. Fucking badass. Yeah. Uh, and still lives in a basement apartment in DuPont. DC is expensive. I got to tell you. Uh, you'd think a lawyer at the INS could get out of a basement apartment, but no. Um, one of my uh, friends that lived in DC was a lawyer, and him and his wife both like still had to live like out like they lived outside of dc just yeah. to pay rent like it's just crazy to get like a decent place it's so yeah. hard i feel like if you want like a good apartment in dc it starts at like three grand a month or something it's, it's crazy it's really nuts especially dupont circle that's like a very swanky mm-hmm. part of town um okay so on the evening of january 9th 1999 uh joyce had been to see a movie and had dinner with her friends before heading to one of her favorite hot spots a coffee shop called starbucks Oh, I've heard of that. This is 1999, so Starbucks was like a, a quaint coffee coffee shop at this point. It was like, yeah. Do you remember when Starbucks became like a thing? Because I I remember it being like middle school, vaguely. like it becoming like I remember that was like the era of frappuccinos because oh, we never heard yeah. of one before. We definitely were in the era of frappuccinos. Now the kids are like, can I get a flat white with oat milk? And I'm like. What? <laughs> Like, like, can no. I get a strawberry chip frappuccino with extra if, milk? If I worked at Starbucks, I'd probably be like, no, you can have a double chocolate chip frappuccino just like we all did when You're we like, were 13. where are your parents? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get you good and sugared up. Go no home. Java chip, just yeah. chocolate for you. Um, yeah. So I guess Starbucks was found in the 90s, I believe, the first one. And my, I was just talking to my mom. She was like, oh, I went to the original. She went to the original Starbucks in Seattle, like way back in the day in the 90s. Wow. And she's like, I remember being like so amazed. <laughs> she's like, you just went in and ordered coffee and they like handed it to you. Like it was such a 
I don't know, new experience. And she's like, yeah, and it was so good. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, good times. Um, So anyway, she went to her favorite quaint little coffee shop called Starbucks. And uh, so Roger, her brother, remembers at about 8.15 p.m., my sister was with her friend Kathy. Kathy had generously offered to give her a ride home because Joyce didn't have a car. But Joyce asked to make one quick stop at the Starbucks to grab a cup of tea. So uh, she's in your camp here. The oh. non-coffee. Um, what, are you, what are your? I'm sorry. Society. I'm sorry. Society. I don't sleep society. much these days. Society. That's okay. I don't sleep much ever. So I, <laughs> I can relate to you on just having a, Excellent. a constant fog on my brain. A London fog, if you will. A London fog. Well, whenever you have kids, you'll at least be prepared for that part of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so good for you. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, okay, you really want to try to keep me from sleeping? Jokes on you. I've never yeah, slept. I was so. going to say, like, jokes on you. Yeah. Um, So instead of Kathy staying and then driving Joyce home, Joyce insisted that her apartment was only four blocks away so Kathy could drop her off at the Starbucks and Joyce would walk home. And that must just be really rough for Mm. Kathy, who was like, all right, if you insist on walking home, I'll I'll head out. So Kathy said Joyce seemed like she needed some alone time and wanted to walk home. So Kathy called it a night and drove off without her and Joyce never made it home. Mm. so joyce chang she had been born december 7th of 1970 and was known to her friends as joycey uh she was of taiwanese american descent came from a very very tight-knit family uh her father was a chemical engineer and he and joyce's mother had emigrated from taiwan to chicago um and she was the only daughter with three brothers so they had four kids and only one daughter Um, Unfortunately, in 1995, a tragedy hit the family when Joyce's father had a heart attack in the pool. Oh, shit. And then drowned in the pool. Oh, my God. Yeah, fucking terrifying. And so since then, uh, Joyce's mom and older brother had moved to the San Fernando Valley. And uh, Joyce went to Smith, like I said earlier. And in her senior year, she was elected student government uh, president. She attended Georgetown University Law in the evenings. She was just like a very, uh, very badass, mm. uh, smart lady. Okay. She was known for her kindness and bubbliness. Like the classic, the quote was like literally said she lit up a room, like the classic light up a room trope. Yep. 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 Um, so she was definitely that type of girl. There was an article written by a guy named Eddie Dean in the Washington City paper, which like did a kind of deep dive into Joyce. And he told us about her personality as follows. Chang was never comfortable on the receiving end of a favor. It was she who most often did the giving, whether it was a homemade personalized birthday gift, a surprise phone call with her playful hey bud greeting, or some other beyond the call of duty gesture. She prided herself on her independence, beholden to nobody. On a whim, she'd book a budget flight to some European capital for a solo visit to turn a long weekend into another adventure. But her dislike and fear of driving had long ago become a sort of inside joke among Chang and her friends. Unless it was absolutely necessary, such as when she sometimes rented a car on business trips, the intrepid world traveler simply refused to get behind the wheel. So most social evenings ended with someone giving Chang a lift home, or at least part of the way home. She'd often have late night sessions at the office and have to take a cab home. Joyce would always scream that she had to pay the five or six or seven dollars every night to take a cab home because she didn't have a car, recalls her brother Roger. At some point, the family was going to help her buy one. Chang would also always bring her friends presents, even if it were her own birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's so cute. Wow. So her a, birthday, a lawyer and an angel is what and I'm an, hearing. A literal <laughs> angel. She yeah. like her so her birthday is December seventh. And she mm. would bring people gifts on her birthday and be like, oh, well, it's so close to Christmas. Oh. And it was like, come on, it's your birthday. But what she a would, cutie. Yeah. She would literally give people their Christmas gifts on her birthday just so that like she were the one was the one giving the present. Uh maybe she had some like crazy social anxiety about people paying attention to yeah. her. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I yeah, I can I can understand that part definitely of like, no. Don't be nice to me. <laughs> I don't want to. I, I simply know. don't deserve it. No, I simply I, don't deserve it. And I yeah. don't want to open a present because then it's just awkward for everybody. Well, a lot of people, I don't have the anxiety of opening presents, but apparently a lot of people have that anxiety and it's similar to like when a waiter sings happy birthday to you. Oh, which, yeah, absolutely. Or I like hate, even opening presents is like all eyes on you. I hate it because, well. 
I mean, I hate it too. I also hate the waiter singing to me thing. I oh that if yeah. You, if you're a server and someone, it's someone's birthday, maybe ask them first if they want attention. You know, but I feel like maybe, they're always like. Maybe I feel just like bring a them server, cake. But I feel like a server's in a hard spot because it's like the one person is like insisting, and then the other person's like no, and then it's like, well, what do you do? Like, I'm sure the server doesn't want to sing to them either. <laughs> That's true. I would just 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 bring them an extra large slice of cake and be like, oh, we can't sing because of COVID. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, try that. But don't blame it on me if it goes wrong. Blame it on me. Blame it on him. Always. Yeah. Blame everything on him. Yeah. Um, so friends recalled an endless list of such offerings from Chang, always personalized, including saffron that she brought back from a trip to Spain, a children's book from London for someone's toddlers, a tin whistle from Ireland, a handwritten cookbook in which she'd copied Asian recipes she couldn't find in any published cookbook. Um, and for a girlfriend who had moved to the West Coast, she mailed her a kit containing jumper cables and emergency flares. Um, so she just like wow. got very personal special gifts for everybody yeah um, she's also she seems like she's very uh i don't know just a very thoughtful person very thoughtful yes that's the word i was going to use too um so on the day of her disappearance it was january 9th it was a saturday and she had headed in to do a bit of work at the ins before meeting up with a few friends um at a coffee shop and patty uh her name was Patty First. She's a Justice Department lawyer and one of Joyce's friends. Remembers Joyce being a little tired that day. She'd had a hard week at work. She had a cold and she had just come back from an extremely long detail. So Patty remembers that they left the coffee shop. Joyce pulled up her hood. And this was not the Starbucks later on. This was a different. This was earlier in the day. Got it. So they went to a coffee shop together. Joyce pulled up her hood. She pulled the strings to pull it tight around her face. Here, I can do it for you. Yes, please. <laughs> Actually, the string fell out, but here we go. Why do you look cool? I don't look cool. Look at me. You look... I look well. like a fool. Okay. She pulled the strings tight around her face, uh, and Patty says it was hysterical. She was so tiny, and she looked really funny. After dropping Patty at her home via Kathy's car, so that Joyce and Kathy dropped Patty off at home, and then Joyce and Kathy were like, let's go out to dinner. So they went to dinner at Laurel Plaza, and before leaving the restaurant around 8.30, she had to call a friend who was about to perform in a theater show that evening. So she's like, hold on, <laughs> let me call my friend to wish her luck in the oh, theater show. <laughs> like, she's just so cute. I'm just waiting for her to like have a flaw to her at this point. Yeah, unfortunately, there aren't many that are listed anywhere, so Damn. it makes it harder to swallow this story. But yeah, so she, uh, so she calls her friend, and after that... Kathy drops Joyce off at Starbucks for her evening cup of herbal tea. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, she was drinking tea because she had been told by her doctor to stay away from coffee because she was on the brink of getting some severe ulcers. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, same girl. Coffee does not do well for that. Uh, mm. Yikes. And I imagine, I mean, I don't know why she has ulcers, but I know that ulcers can be exacerbated by stress and it sounds like she had quite a stressful job too. So yeah, yeah. maybe that was part of it. Is I wonder if there's a correlation between lawyers and ulcers. Me like too. Doctors and ulcers, you know? Like really high stress jobs. Mm -hmm. Um because I'm a podcaster with ulcers and I don't think that equates, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm like, I must be the outlier. <laughs> okay. If, honestly maybe uh, I don't know. No I'm going to ruin think, your fucking study is what I'm going to do. You would definitely be like that one person who like fucks up the curve or something. Who's like nine out of ten dentists agree and I'm like the tenth one. <laughs> I'm like, oops. <laughs> I agree too. They just don't want to tell you, you know. Yeah, I agree and I forgot to raise my hand because I fell asleep. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Yeah. Oh, so when Joyce's brother, Roger, noticed that his sister didn't come home Saturday night, he at first thought, oh, she's probably just crashing at a friend's house. But when he when she didn't answer his calls for two days after that and didn't show up for work on Monday, he mm. obviously knew something was very wrong. Um, and he filed a missing persons report. And because she worked as a federal employee, the FBI immediately got involved um, because she works at the INS. You never know right, if right. that has something to do with her disappearance. So on the same day that Roger reported her missing, um, a couple strolling through Anacostia Park stumbled across a billfold, like a like a small wallet, along the riverbank. And inside the billfold was Joyce Chang's government credit card. Oh, shit. 
Yeah. Uh, and that not good. Not good. And it was five miles southeast of the Starbucks. And remember, her apartment was four blocks away from Starbucks. So she is right. Like, so what was she doing over there? Exactly. Like somewhere completely different. So they handed the billfold to the park police, um, and as days went by, local media was going crazy about Joyce's disappearance, hoping someone would have seen her. Police were investigating the case, and on January 12th, um, they discovered a cryptic clue Mm. outside the Starbucks. So there was a wall outside the Starbucks, and there was a message painted onto it. Uh Uh-oh. Was it painted by... Curls Empty. <laughs> was, it paint- was it painted by Ruben Brink? Hang I on. really had the same thought. I was like, oh my God, a sign painted. Yeah. Um, there was a falling message painted onto it. Good day, JC. May I never miss the thrill of being near you. <gasps> Ew. Yuck. Oh, I hate that. And so her brother in particular was like, I think this has to do with my sister. Those are her initials, Joyce Chang. And the content of the message, may I never miss the thrill of being near you, is like a little too weird to show up yeah. like, right after she disappears. So, you know, they who knows? Um, Yikes. And then also they discovered that on the night she disappeared, someone had called her pager. But her pager had been left back at her apartment. So after doing some digging, the police were able to track the call coming from a hotel pay phone near Dulles Airport. Uh, And so these are like two strange and mysterious events. And unfortunately, they were never able to decipher who was responsible for either of these. Really? Really. Wow. Just sucks because it's like some weird, mysterious clue that just never gets placed or figured out. That's so odd. And for all we know, I guess it could have just been random. Right. There's no, yeah. Ugh, it's so creepy. Even if it's not about her, it's so creepy. It is creepy. And then even the phone call, like, maybe it was something, maybe it was a wrong number. You know, you never know. Like, it just sucks that they never figured it out. Um, So on January 14th, five days after her disappearance, the couple who had found Joyce Chang's billfold were watching the news and were like, wait, that's the person the name and the face or the name i guess it was just the name oh no maybe it was her face i don't know but they recognized that it, it was, was potentially a combo <laughs> it was her identity they recognized on the news and said that's what was in the billfold in that credit card that we found oh wow and so they called the police and they were like hey we found this bill- billfold and they're like what did you do with it and they were like we handed it over to the park police well it turns out it had been in lost and found for uh that entire time oh my gosh so it could have been a big break in the case much earlier, but it had just been sitting in lost and found. So thank wow. God this couple like happened to see this on the news and was like, wait, that looks like the thing we found. It really is like kismet uh, in yeah. some way. So if, like, thank God, like if you weren't watching the news that day, like who knows? Yeah. It would, nothing would have ever. It would have just it. stayed in lost and found for how long, who knows how yeah. long. So it turns out that Billfold was in the lost and found. So the FBI, um, got a hold of it and they reacted quickly by sending a 57 member search and rescue team down to the riverbank where the billfold had been discovered. And just as expected, they found all sorts of items belonging to Joyce, uh, in Anacostia park. They found her keys, her Mm. like blockbuster rental card. Wow. Uh, her green suede jacket, which now had a tear in it and her gloves, which she was wearing the night she disappeared. So authorities, it's really especially like in the middle of the park in the middle of the night and you don't have your jacket on like that's not on purpose something, right and yeah something bad happened exactly um so authorities continued their search along the riverbank and eventually they found a body Ugh, okay guess what it's hers it was not joyce's what i know who was it So they did DNA testing and they were able to profile the decomposed body to be that of 25-year-old Ridgely Tyrone Pleasance Jr., whose body had been in the river for two weeks. Um, His mother had reported him missing, but supposedly no search parties ever went out to find him. Uh, His cause of death was deemed to be drowning, and to this day his death is a mystery and is classified as undetermined. Oh my gosh, that's so wild. Isn't that freaky? Weird. So... So wait, his family never. So like, his, did they? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, his his mom had reported him missing, but like nobody had ever done anything about it. That's um, so wild. Okay, and so I guess she was just. Uh, it's just really wild. It's like 
really sad that she reported her son missing. Nobody did anything about it. And then two weeks later, they're searching for somebody else and find his body. You know, it's like, I don't know. It just makes me sad. Which also means that, like, if it weren't for that couple finding the wallet, then they found two bodies. True. Or at least they found a whole other body by accident. That's true. Yeah, that's true. They, yeah, exactly. They, like, indirectly led to that happening. Um, So as for Joyce Chang, nationally, she quickly became one of the most famous disappearances at the time. Her story was even featured on America's Most Wanted, America Fights Back. Mm. So I I assume this is some sort of (laughs) sub-special of America's Most Wanted? It feels like an an hour-long, yeah, bonus bonus footage or something. Yeah, exactly. It's a weekend special. Um, so locally, they had weekly vigils uh, in DuPont Circle and more canvassing. Um, and Judy Chang, Joyce's mother, had flown over to stay with Roger, her son, as they continued to search for Joyce. Um, she was a devout Catholic. She went to St. Matthew's Cathedral every single day and just prayed for her daughter to be found and return safely. Mm. It wasn't until three months later, on April 1st, unfortunately, April Fool's Day, um, mm-hmm. that the second tragedy of the case occurred. And that is when a canoeist was out uh, on the Potomac River in Fairfax County, um, over eight miles from where Joyce's belongings had been discovered in January. And they spotted a body uh, amongst the wow. boulders on the banks. Eight of the miles. So, so she had just eight like floated miles. down? Or... Yeah. God, that's terrible. That's ho- horrible. It is. Um. So when police arrived at the scene, they thought it to be Joyce because um, they found a bank card with her name on it inside the stock inside her stocking on her leg. Oh. I know it's fucking terrible. Um, they, you know, did DNA tests, and after two weeks, they found out uh, their worst fears were confirmed. It was Joyce, and obviously everybody was heartbroken. Her brother later remembered um, when he was told the news, "quote That's when all hope just dashed." that Joyce was alive. And I quickly called my mother, one of the most difficult phone calls I've ever had to make to tell my mother that her daughter was dead. And that's a moment that I'll never forget. (sighs) Oh my God. I know like I sound like a broken record and like an obvious one at that by saying that's terrible, but like, I don't know what else to say. I know it. This is just what I do to you every week and I'm sorry about it. I know it's okay. Uh, No wonder you wanted to find new friends. didn't want to watch TV with me anymore. You know, I get it before. Before the episode started, I said, this one's for Christine. And then I spat on a picture of you. And I went, <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. I went, I went, this is 100% intentional, and I hope her feelings are hurt. Wow. Please. Wow. Thank God that's what happened. Thank, Thank God, God it know. worked. I know. I know. What a powerful hex you put on me. I know. Anyway, it, this is so fucking terrible. I really, I wish I had something original to say, but like, what else do you do? I mean, I don't have anything original to tell you. I just keep telling you the same horrible things every week. So, you know, mm. it's my fault. Um, so thanks to decomposition, the forensics team were unable to identify her cause of death. So it was left as undetermined. And the investigation continued um, with even more gusto behind it because they were trying to figure out what the hell happened. So they created a Joyce Chang task force. Um, Agents were using floating devices to test the river currents uh, to figure out, like, how her body had moved so far. Um, And one of the most bizarre pieces of information the FBI apparently just couldn't wrap their heads around was the fact that no one had been using um, Joyce's bank card. And in their heads, they were able to justify it. Because of the fact that Joyce was Taiwanese American, and this is like pretty fucked up, but according to um, a friend of Joyce's, quote, the police consulted one of their internal Asian experts who said it wasn't such a big deal that she didn't use her ATM card to withdraw any money because Chinese Americans keep their money in a mattress. The ignorance (gasps) of this is ridiculous. She went to Smith College. So like they're literally just theorizing like, oh, well, no wonder she's not using her bank card. Oh my god! It's just like blatantly racist. It's... Just like, just like a random fucking stereotype. And yes, just... yeah, terrible. Just, oh, holy crap! And turns out it was like it's no, breathtakingly she's dead racist. in the river. But okay, I guess have your fucking theory. Wow. Yikes. Um, so another theory was that maybe she had been kidnapped by an Asian prostitution ring, quote unquote. Um, And with no clear cause of death, no evidence of foul play, and basically no more information, the case was closed. Uh, And meanwhile, approximately 700 people went to St. Matthew's Cathedral, packed the cathedral for her memorial service. 
And um, thankfully, that wasn't totally the end. So in May of 2001, which was two years later, uh, finally, they revisited Joyce's case um, because they had some new information that had come to the table. Because a some certain someone named Chandra Levy, uh, an intern in the office of California Congressman Gary Condi, was reported missing. Okay. Now, do you know the Chandra Levy case? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, I, I guess you'll know more about it now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I feel like a lot of people were like, oh, when I made yeah. that connection. But um, Yeah, not me, obviously. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know because you're also from the D.C. area if this was something that was out and about i don't think well it was also 99 ish right um yeah this so no this is uh chandra levy was i believe 2002 2001 or 2002 i was still like nine so i don't think i was really paying attention okay so uh chandra and joyce didn't know each other um but there were some pretty serious similarities between their disappearances uh so there's a website called my true crime stories and they pointed out some of the similarities Joyce and Chandra had both served as interns for Democratic congressmen from California. The two congressmen's offices were adjacent to each other. Both were petite brunettes. They lived within a few blocks from each other. Both Mm. had the same types of friends involved in the political arena, and both frequented the same Starbucks coffee shop. Interesting. So just an odd amount of coincidences. Um, However, at this point, the police had decided... uh, publicly that they were going to call Joyce Chang's death a suicide. Wow. Yeah. Um, and those who knew Joyce were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Well, probably those who didn't know Joyce were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, one friend, <laughs> right. Amy, commented, this is a woman without a history of depression. This is a woman who worked very hard in life and had everything to live for. And to lose who she is by saying she was someone who committed suicide, I think, is another injustice to her. Um, so the following month, also June like what? Sorry, also like what would have been her cause of death if it was? So um, I do mention that later. But okay, I guess I was I can, gonna say. I Go guess ahead. I can mention it now, but like basically, the insinuation was that she just like walked into the river. Okay. And like oh. drowned herself. Okay. Like, there's no other clear explanation for that. But then, and why also, would you like have your? I'm talking about. Joyce still yeah. but like why would you have like your card in your sock and stuff or like, and like five miles away you just like decided yeah. you went to Starbucks for your tea and then just like walked to the river it, yeah. yeah it just doesn't make sense no um, and so publicly they were like that's what we've determined and it's like okay mm, well, publicly <laughs> it was a it was a stupid determination pardon me but publicly mind. yeah <laughs> <laughs> publicly that's dumb respectfully you're stupid (laughs) respectfully (laughs) and publicly um so the following month june 2002 a hiker up in rock creek park uh was minding their own business hiking when they noticed their dog had stumbled upon something and wouldn't move off his spot uh and so what did the dog discover do we think a body a human skull yeah oh shit okay so police arrived at the crime scene where more human remains were found, along with a sports bra and a cassette player. And mm. uh, dental records confirmed the remains to be those of Chandra Levy. And the case was treated as a homicide, although an autopsy provided no conclusive answers as to the cause of death. And the case went cold once again. Whoa. Oh, my God. It's just terrible. Like, fucking found off a hiking path. I guess just... I don't know. I don't know enough about that world to know like what anyone's expected to do after that if they hit a dead end but still it's like damn like it's like like, i think you'd be able to get more out of it but i just feel like in in 2022 we have enough technology that most things should be solvable and like i'm maybe that's like such an ignorant thing to say but in my mind i'm like damn if we've got a tesla we should have like a robot who can just fucking figure out mysteries I know, but my thought about that is that it is possible, but I don't think the funding or the people, like, I don't think the funding is there and I don't think the people are there. Like, I don't think, mm. think about the backlog of rape kits that there's, there's just not enough right. resources to, to run them. Like, they could right. be run, the DNA could be run on all of them. And it's like, they're just so backlogged that like, Such a good years point. and years. So yeah, I mean, you're right. We do have a fucking Tesla. We probably could have a robot that did all this shit, but no, instead we're putting fucking 
what's his face into space on a big <laughs> penis. So like, what are our priorities? I don't know. Trash. Anyway, so respectfully, um, uh, publicly, <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> publicly, respectfully. So yeah. dumb. Um, so approximately seven years later, March of 2009, a jail informant told police that a criminal had confessed to the murder of Chandra Levy. Mm. And this was in 2009. So many years later. This man was a na- was a man by the name of Ingmar Guandique. Wait, okay. Guandique? Guandique. Uh, who, about a month prior to Chandra Levy's disappearance, had assaulted two women in the very same park. So Guandique is a man from El Salvador who at the time was living illegally in the United States and was a Mara Salvatrucha member, a.k.a. MS-13. Mm. And uh, if you don't know what MS-13 is, uh, they are an extremely dangerous international criminal gang with origins in Los Angeles um, With that was originally set up to protect Salvadoran immigrants. So when the police dug a bit further into this claim, they discovered that Gwandi K had not gone to work the day that Chandra Levy went missing. And secondly, when re-examining her remains, evidence suggested that she had been attacked in the same way that he had attacked his other two victims. And third, his landlady remembered seeing scratches on his face the day that uh, Chandra Levy was killed. Mm, okay. And finally, most importantly, a photo of Chandra was found in his possessions. Oh, psh, done. Ding, ding, Dunzo. ding. Ding, ding, ding. So in November of 2010, Ingmar Guandique was convicted of murdering Chandra Levy under the speculation that he had tied her up in a secluded spot and left her to die of dehydration oh. in the park. Um, and then in a bananas, bonkers turn of events, in 2015, the conviction was overturned because what? it turns out the informant in jail had like blatantly lied. <gasps> he just made up the fucking story. Oh, no. So a woman was able to prove via tape recording uh, that this jail informant blatantly just said, I lied about the confession. Like, he didn't make that confession. Oh, wow. My oh, gosh. my gosh. What's wrong with people, man? So in July of 2016, it was decided he would not be retried for Chandra's murder, with police also assuring that nothing linked him to Joyce Chang either. Um, so instead, he was deported to El Salvador. And although he was never, um, so that was kind of the end of that story, basically, um, at least that thread of the story. Um, and then like what I remember about the Chandra Levy case is what's what I'm about to mention, which is that, um, even though he was never officially considered a suspect, uh, California Congressman Gary Condi, who she worked for Mm -hmm. was, he was never like technically a suspect, but people were definitely suspicious of him. Um, Especially because it turned out that he and Chandra were having an affair. Okay. Well, wow. Yeah. So that All of was... a sudden, I too am suspicious. We have <laughs> added a member to the group. Hey, welcome. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. This story was, I remember this being a huge drama back in the day. Because it's like this young, pretty intern goes missing. Turns out she was sleeping with the congressman. Like it was just a whole scandal, you know? Yeah. Um, and so... And he was married, obviously. Otherwise, you know, I mean, wouldn't be the classic scandal. So uh, he was ruled out as a suspect, but it had a huge impact on his campaign. Um, According to In Touch Weekly, in 2002, he lost his house seat just mere weeks after Chandra's remains were discovered in Washington, D.C.'s Rock Creek Park. So kind of screwed his whole. But I mean, he was also sleeping with an intern. So, you know, don't feel that sorry for him for, you know, messing up his career whatever yep um so strangely enough joyce chang's case was believed to be linked to another murder of a 28 year old brunette this time of a woman called christine merzion okay and christine was a fellow in her second year of the policy fellowship program with the center of education in dc and she had been raped and murdered in august of 1998 which was five months before joyce's death mm. after walking home from a barbecue at 10 30 p.m wow terrible and and again like since they found um joyce's body so much later uh they weren't able to determine like if there was sexual assault they weren't able to determine how she died so that's kind of just up in the air and though dna testing would link christine's case to eight others in georgetown from 1991 to 1998 what in what would be called the Potomac River Rapist case. What? Yeah. Oh, I don't... Okay, I've never heard that name before. I don't think I have either, honestly. Wow. 
Um, so that is something I guess I'll have to cover one day. Yeah. So the connection to Joyce's case was ruled out, even though there were these eight other cases and now wow. nine with Christine. So I don't, I don't know if that, if they're connected or if they just didn't have enough to prove it. But with police determining there to be no connection between Joyce, Chandra, and Christine's cases, um, now they're saying again, well, it was probably just suicide. They went back to that theory. Ew. Yeah. Like, instead yeah. of just handling it as three separate cases all of a sudden. Well, in, in, so they thought, like, oh, wait, maybe maybe Joyce's case might be linked to Christine's, but they couldn't prove it. And they said maybe, it'll, maybe it was linked to Chandra's. They couldn't prove it. And since they didn't have proof, they just said, well, I guess then it was... It's just a standalone. Suicide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Basically, like instead of it becoming a like part of developing. A thing. Yeah. Further. It was just like, let's go back to that. So Gene Smith, chief of staff for Representative Barman, um, was very confused about how the suicide was thought to be like the most likely explanation. Um, he questioned uh, how Joyce would have ended up five miles from the Starbucks with no car, first of all. Right. When her friend Kathy was literally driving her home. Right, it, it like she was no sense, and then four blocks down the road, yeah, yeah, exactly. And also, do we think anything happened in her actual home? Like she got dragged from her home? No, because Roger was at home, and so he remember right. he was waiting for her at home. So he was like, so do we think something must have happened? Like, yeah, something happened before she ever got home. Like right, probably right, right. in that four block, which is just like fucking awful. Four blocks from home. Yeah, it's not that far. <sighs> uh, also, I heard you talking about um, that app. But I think you called it Moonlight, but it's called Noonlight, the one that... Yeah, I um, did call it Noonlight. I think my M's and N's just sound similar. Oh, maybe. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's a great app. I know you already mentioned it, but yes. I do love... App. I love that app so much. It's so nice. Especially, it's awesome. like, even if it happens, like, I've had to use it one time and I was just sitting in the car and so I felt like someone was, like, circling my car. And yeah. It's just nice to just have it on me. I mean, cool. I was literally in my car, so I was able to, like, get out. But, like, it was... It's nice yeah, that wherever I, mean, I anytime- am... Anytime you feel unsafe and like it lets you um, plug in like your uh, your emergency contacts. So like they contact yep. not only the police, but like your in case of emergency person and have your location. It's really yeah. great. So I was very excited when you mentioned that. So I was like, ah, I love that. <laughs> I love it too. So they're saying, yes, it's um, suicide. And Gene Smith is like, how is it suicide? He says, no public transportation goes there. And on an extremely freezing cold day in January, commit suicide by wading into the Anacostia River and putting her head under the water. It is patently absurd on its face. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. I agree yeah. with that. Like, what What the fuck are you talking about? She wandered into the river. She took her jacket off, which had a big tear in it, by the way. She took like her gloves not- off. Yeah, exactly. Like, did everything to get as much hypothermia as possible? What? Yeah, it's just such a weird... It's so weird. It doesn't really make sense. Um, So then later, it was finally officially ruled that Joyce's Joyce's death was actually a homicide. And this was a hugely cathartic moment for the Chang family. Um, So her friend Laura Ann Phillips later commented, I have a very heavy heart today. It's been 12 long years. There's some relief in hearing the police chief make her statement and rule this as a homicide. Um, And then soon after, police announced they had found the culprits. It was thought that Steve Allen, a man serving a life sentence in prison, and Neil Joaquin, a man who was deported to Guyana in 2006, were responsible. Oh. And according to my true crime stories, that site I mentioned earlier, authorities' hypothesis was that, quote, Steve Allen and Neil Joaquin abducted Joyce while she was walking home from Starbucks. They took her to the banks of the Anacostia River to rob her. Once there, investigators believe Joyce tried to flee only to slip on the ice and fall into the river where she succumbed to the freezing temperature. Oh, shit. So wait, don't... but she was still naked, though. She was not naked. She wasn't. Oh, OK. Remember, they Why found her she... bank card in her stocking and everything. Right, 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 right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no. But she she had been decomposed to the point that they couldn't figure out if there was a sexual assault or anything. Mm. But the only clothes that were not found with her were, were the coat and the gloves. Right. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. That's I mean, what they s- think happened. But again, I don't think there's any way to prove that. I feel like I'm going to do that thing where I ask you a question that like, why... If you knew it, you would have already. Said well, no, it, so. I, I mean, <laughs> but, I don't know. But it's like, why do they think of all people? It's those two people. Like, how? What? What did they? What evidence do they have against those people? I don't know, and I assume they just announced it without 
the backstory, but I'm assuming it was like either a confession or mm. somebody told another informant. And obviously we know sometimes the informant, as with Chandra Levy, made makes shit up. But yeah, maybe... I was going to say like you think this time they'd be extra careful like <laughs> and not yeah. make that mistake twice. I mean, maybe they, you know, were able to pin it on those guys. Maybe they confessed. I really I don't actually know. Um, I don't think they ever announced it. But uh, both were already clearly in trouble for other things. So Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Wow. So the case uh, to this day, the two guys, even though they said these are our culprits, they were never actually charged with this murder, with Joyce's murder. Even though the guy, I mean, the one guy's, uh, and I I feel like that's such a hard thing because it's like, yeah, he's already in jail, but like there's not that justice that the family can feel for like, Right. Saying he did this, you know, it's yeah. shitty. It's like, it's like so anticlimactic of like, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess our we just have justice to... is already kind of being served. Yeah. But and like, not, really. not for, not for her specifically. Yeah. It feels yeah. kind of weird. Um, so Chang's case still has not been shut once and for all, which I also imagine is hard to not have the closure. Um, they did make, uh, some headway in Christine Merzion's case, though. So in November oh. of 2019, which I guess is pretty recent, after some DNA phenotyping, they found the Potomac River Rapist. <gasps> wow. DNA strikes again. Which I guess means you will eventually be covering this story. I really should be. And I don't even know if I should uh, say who it is to like, well, I guess I can say it. He's just some six-year-old landscaper from South Carolina. Okay. So. But, like, can you even, like, think about it? Like, they would never have figured that out without DNA. This guy's just some random dude from South Carolina who, like, I guess traveled up there and committed all these rapes and then... Imagine, like... Went back home to landscapes and bushes. Like, what? Imagine choosing to be, like, a criminal, uh, like, the year before DNA comes out. And then (laughs) all of a sudden you hear about this, like, groundbreaking (laughs) news of, like, this thing called DNA exists. And you're like, oh, fuck. Like, and you're like, wait, I brushed my hair at the scene of the crime or something. Right, like, yeah. Because yeah. I feel like before it was like, as long as you hid fingerprints, yeah. they couldn't find you. And now it's like, oh, if you leave so much as like a skin cell or like hair or and anything. Even then, what's the deal with fingerprints? Are they still using that as like a as yeah, an official so. way to find people? Okay. I mm-hmm. didn't know if that had changed over time. Or hey, not. what's the deal with fingerprints? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the punchline to that is, but I love it. <laughs> I don't either, but I also thought it was kind of a fun little stand-up routine you could work on. Uh, I'll, I'll shop it for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I expect this uh, by next episode. Okay, gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'll they, do the n- numerology for rice pudding nine. Make a joke about fingerprints. God, I have so much homework for you. I know. Oh, my God. Um. So, yes, the Potomac River Rapist was found, so at least there was headway in that case. Um, and he would go on to be charged with a total of 10 rapes and the murder of Christine. And, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, he couldn't be linked to Joyce's case. Obviously, fortunately, because you never want to link somebody to another serial killer or not a serial killer, but like a uh, serial right. rapist. But also, right. like, unfortunately, there were no answers from this for Joyce's family. Jeez. Um, so... For what it's worth, her legacy lives on. In 2009, her brother Roger published the book My Peace I Offer You on the disappearance of his sister. And um, ever since, uh, her murder has been active with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And her family also set up the Joyce Chang Memorial Scholarship to support one student a year with an internship at the Asian American Justice Center. And I know, which is pretty cool. And there's also the Joyce Chang Memorial Award, which was set up by Georgetown University Law Center uh, to support an evening student with a demonstrable commitment to public service. So like how she went to night classes. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, that's the story of Joyce Chang. And it's frustrating because there's just not really a clear answer. Wow. And it yeah. makes me wonder about like, so I watched that show Disappeared, which I've talked about a lot on the show. And like, there's so many just unsatisfying endings to these episodes where it's like, we just don't know whether they're dead or alive. And you just think about like how a body goes eight miles down river and a canoeist just happens to see it. Think about all the people who don't get spotted or who go missing. Think of just... the, that was eight miles that canoeist went through. Like what, who yeah. was 
also in that water and she just didn't bump into that yes like that other guy they found like he would never have been found if they hadn't searched it's just disturbing to think about so um that's that on that my friends wow leave you with a disturbing thought yeah i don't like that it that there was no official I know. Answer at the end of it all. I am glad that they changed it from suicide because it just seemed like that at was least. kind of a cop out, you know? Yeah, at least. Yeah, at least. At least the family didn't have to, like, spend the rest of their lives fighting against the suicide, you know, verdict. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So hopefully some answers will come about. But until then, you know, yeah. be kind to yourself and others. <laughs> That's my new slogan. <laughs> As I'm about to go get stabbed in the arm with needles. So someone's about to not be For very your kind own good. to me. I know. I'm, I, I really have never been so thirsty either until all of a sudden I was told I needed to fast and I couldn't drink water. <laughs> like I've never, I could go like probably days without drinking water and not even think about it. And now that I've been told yep. I can't, I'm so fucking thirsty. Everyone, please go drink a sip of water in my honor, please, because I can't do it right now, and it's Did really you, awful. You've never had a um, – have you ever had a colonoscopy? No. So they make you fast for, like, 24 hours or something, 48 hours. I don't remember. Oh my, even water? No. So you can drink water. You can drink clear liquids. And, like, at first it's like, okay, I can go, like, two days without eating. And it all of a sudden is, like, hell. You're like – all I can drink is like orange or yellow Gatorade and water and broth. And it sounds like, oh, I'll be fine. And then like <laughs> about 12 hours in, not. you're like, all I want is like a graham cracker or fucking saltine. Oh, nope. Jeez. I, well, I don't envy you during that moment, but I also don't envy me right now. My mouth is the driest it's ever been. And you in burnt my your life. mouth. Oh no. I know. It really, it feels like a whole other roof of my mouth. It feels like super swollen gross it's very gross but anyway so i've got my mouth to take care of and my blood and my I fasting can't and wait for stuff. to hear how your blood works out me too hopefully good stuff hopefully, hopefully only good hopefully at least neutral so <laughs> yeah I okay i'll take neutral too yeah all right well i'll give you the update next week i guess and that's why we drink